Hello, this is Andrea with Idea Facts, bringing you the nine deadliest diseases of all time. Let's start with the plague. The very first plague pandemic occurred around 541 AD in ancient Rome. It was also called the pestilence or the great mortality. It wasn't called the Black Death until the beginning of the second plague pandemic in 1348. It was the most fatal pandemic recorded in human history, causing the death of 75 to 200 million people in Eurasia and North Africa, peaking in Europe from 1347 to 1351. The bubonic plague was one of the types of plagues there were at the time. Symptoms of this disease include fever of 38 to 41 Celsius, which is 100 to 106 Fahrenheit, headaches, painful aching joints, nausea, vomiting, and a general feeling of malaise. Contemporary accounts of the pandemic are varied and often imprecise. The most commonly noted symptom was the appearance of buboes, um, and they appeared to be small tumors that were in fact swollen glands in the groin neck and armpits. They oozed pus and blood when opened. This was followed by an acute fever and vomiting of blood. Most victims died two to seven days after initial infection. Eventually, flea bites were identified as a cause of infection. If left untreated, 80% of those infected would die. Another distinct form of the disease, the pneumatic plague, infect- infected the lungs and led to respiratory problems. Symptoms include fever, cough, and blood-tinged sputum. As the disease progresses, sputum becomes free-flowing and bright red. Pneumonic plague has a mortality of 90 to 95%. A third and more deadly type called the septinemic plague has a mortality rate of near 100%. Symptoms are high fevers and purple skin patches would progress so rapidly that there would often be no time for development of enlarged lymph nodes. Occurrences of the plague were quieted due to quarantines, where unaffected people would stay home to prevent getting it. Flea-carrying rats have long been identified as a culprit of carrying the plague. Recent studies suggest it was flea-carrying humans. Regardless, Humans tend to have much better hygiene and less fleas. Plus, with the invention of the anti-plague vaccine, we are all much better off. However, there have been recent outbreaks of disease. One case of a drug-resistant form of bacterium was found in Madagascar in 1995. A further outbreak in Madagascar was reported in November 2014. In October 2017, the deadliest outbreak of the plague in modern times hit Madagascar killing 170 people and infecting thousands. An estimate of the case fatality rate for the modern bubonic plague following the introduction of antibiotics is 11%, although it may be higher in underdeveloped regions. Rabies is a viral disease that causes inflammation of the brain in humans and other mammals. Early symptoms can include fever and tingling at the site of exposure. These symptoms are followed by nausea, vomiting, violent movements, uncontrolled excitement, fear of water, and inability to move part of the body, confusion, and loss of consciousness. Once symptoms appear, the result is nearly always death. However, the time period between contracting the disease and the start of the symptoms can be anywhere from three months to one year. It is spread when an infected animal bites or scratches a human or other animal. Saliva from an infected animal can also transmit rabies if the saliva comes into contact with the eyes, mouth, or nose. Globally, dogs are the most common animal involved. In the Americas, bat bites are the most common source of rabies infections in humans, and less than 5% of cases are from dogs. Animal control and vaccination problems have decreased the risk of rabies from dogs in a number of regions of the world. 
Immunizing people before they are exposed is recommended for those at high risk, including those who work with bats or who spend prolonged periods in areas of the world where rabies is common. Immunoglobulin vaccines are effective in preventing the disease if the person receives the treatment before the start of rabies symptoms. Washing bites and scratches for 15 minutes with soap and water, iodine or detergent may reduce the number of viral particles and may be somewhat effective in preventing transmission. The word syphilis comes from an epic Latin form of the same name published in 1530. In 1494, King Charles VIII of France led his army of 50,000 soldiers and a large artillery train into northern Italy. While occupying Naples, the French soldiers indulged in a long bout of celebration and debauchery, and within a short space of time, it became apparent that they were afflicted by a terrible disease. The disease started with genital ulcers, then progressed to a fever, general rash, and joint muscle pains. Then weeks or months later were followed by large, painful, foul-smelling abscesses and sores or pox all over the body. Muscles and bones became painful, especially at night. The sores became ulcers that could eat into bones and destroy the nose, lips, and eyes. They often extended into the mouth and throat, and sometimes early death occurred. It appears from descriptions by the scholars and from woodcut drawings at the time that the disease was much more severe than syphilis of today, with a higher and more rapid mortality, and was more easily spread possibly because it was a new disease and the population had no immunity against it. The Public Health Service started the study in 1932 in collaboration with Tuskegee University, then Tuskegee Institute, a historically black college in Alabama. Investigators enrolled a total of 600 impoverished African-American sharecroppers from Macon County, Alabama. Of these men, 399 had latent syphilis, with a control group of 201 who were not infected. The men were promised free medical care, but were never informed of their diagnoses and were given disguised placebos and effective methods and diagnostic procedures as treatment. Impoverished black men were initially told that the study was only going to last six months, but it, left, but it extended 40 years. None of these infected men were treated with penicillin, despite the fact that by 1947, the antibiotic was widely available and had become the standard treatment for syphilis. Smallpox was an infectious disease with the last naturally occurring case diagnosed in October 1977 and with the World Health Organization certifying eradication of the disease in 1980. The risk of death after contracting the disease was 30%, with higher rates among babies. Often those who survived had extensive scarring of their skin, and some were left blind. The initial symptoms of the disease included fever and vomiting. This was followed by formation of ulcers in the mouth and a skin rash. Over a number of days, the skin rash turned into characteristic fluid-filled blisters with a dent in the center. The bumps then scabbed over and fell off, leaving scars. The disease was spread between people or contaminated objects. Prevention was achieved mainly through the smallpox vaccine. Once the disease had developed, certain antiviral medication may have helped. The origin of smallpox is unknown. However, the earliest evidence of the disease dates back to 3rd century BC in Egyptian mummies. The disease historically occurred in outbreaks. In 18th century Europe, it is estimated that 400,000 people died from the disease per year, and that one third of all cases of blindness were due to smallpox. Smallpox is estimated to have killed up to 300 million people in the 20th century, and around 500 million people in the last 100 years of its existence, including six monarchs. As recently as 1967, 15 million cases occurred per year. 
Inoculation for smallpox appears to have started in China around the 1500s. Europe adapted this practice from Asia in the first half of the 18th century. Smallpox is one of two infectious diseases to have been eradicated, the other being Rinderpest in 2011. The term smallpox was first used in Britain in the early 16th century to distinguish the disease from syphilis, which was then known as the Great Pox. Smallpox was lethal to many Native Americans, resulting in sweeping epidemics and repeatedly affecting the same tribes. After its introduction to Mexico in 1519, the disease spread across South America, devastating indigenous populations in what is now Colombia, Peru, and Chile during the 16th century. The disease was slow to spread northward due to the sparse population of the northern Mexico desert region. It was introduced to eastern North America separately by the colonists arriving in 1633 to Plymouth, Massachusetts, and local Native American communities were struck by the virus. It reached the Mohawk Nation in 1634, the Lake Ontario area in 1636, and the lands of other Iroquois tribes by 1679. Between 1613 and 1690, the Iroquois tribes living in Quebec suffered 24 epidemics, almost all of them caused by smallpox. By 1698, the virus had crossed the Mississippi, causing an epidemic that nearly obliterated the Quapaw Indians of Arkansas. According to PBS.org, this helped decrease the Native American population by 90% as Europeans arrived in the country. Cholera came to prominence in the 19th century when a lethal outbreak occurred in India. There have since been numerous outbreaks in seven global pandemics of cholera. The first cholera pandemic emerged out of the Ganges Delta with an outbreak in Jessero, India in 1817, stemming from contaminated rice. The disease quickly spread through most of India, modern-day Myanmar, and modern-day Sri Lanka by traveling along routes established by Europeans. By 1820, cholera had spread to Thailand, Indonesia, killing 100,000 people on the island of Java alone, and the Philippines. From Thailand to Indonesia, the disease made its way to China in 1820 and Japan in 1822 by way of infected people on ships. In 1821, British troops traveling from India to Oman brought cholera to the Persian Gulf. The disease eventually made its way to Europe, reaching modern-day Turkey, Syria, and southern Russia. The pandemic died out six years after it began, likely thanks to a severe winter in 1823 to 1824, which may have killed the bacteria living in water supplies. Cholera is an acute diarrheal disease caused by infection of the intestine with a toxigenic bacterium Vibrio cholerae serogroup. An estimated 2.9 million cases and 95,000 deaths occur each year around the world. The infection is often mild or without symptoms but can be severe. Approximately 1 in 10 people who get sick with cholera will develop severe symptoms such as watery diarrhea, vomiting, and leg cramps. In these people, rapid loss of body fluids leads to dehydration and shock. Without treatment, death can occur within hours. A person can get cholera by drinking water or eating food contaminated with cholera bacteria. In an epidemic, the source of the contamination is usually the feces of an infected person that contaminates water or food. The disease can spread rapidly in areas with inadequate treatment of sewage and drinking water. The infection is not likely to spread directly from one person to another. Therefore, casual contact with an infected person is not a risk factor for becoming ill. The Spanish Flu, the 1918 influenza pandemic, was the most severe pandemic in ancient history. It was caused by an H1N1 virus with genes of avian origin spreading worldwide from 1918 to 1919. In the United States, it was first identified in military personnel in spring of 1918. 
It is estimated that about 500 million people or one third of the world's population became infected with this virus. The number of deaths was estimated to be about 50 million worldwide. Mortality was high in people younger than five years old, 20 to 40 years old, and 65 years or older. The high mortality in healthy people, including those in the 20 to 40 year age group, was a unique feature of this pandemic. During the same time period, World War I was taking place. The conditions of World War I helped the flu to spread. In the fall of 1918, the United States experienced severe shortages of professional nurses. Because of the deployment of large numbers of nurses to military camps in the United States and abroad, and failure to use trained African American nurses. Philadelphia's hit especially hard with this pandemic. Flu viruses more than 500 corpses awaited burial, some for more than a week. Cold storage plants were used as temporary morgues. A manufacturer of trolley cars donated 200 packing crates for use as coffins. In Chicago, along with other cities across the United States, theaters were closed, movie houses and night schools prohibited public gathering. San Francisco's Board of Health required any person serving the public to wear masks and issued strong recommendations to all residents to wear masks in public. In November 1918, the end of World War I came with the resurgence of influenza as people celebrated Armistice Day and soldiers began to demobilize. Not everyone complied with the mask wearing mandate and this resistance may have caused the virus to have resurgences before it died down the following summer. It wasn't until 1945, nearly three decades later, that the first flu vaccine was licensed for civilian use in the U.S. Ebola is formerly known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever, which means severe internal bleeding. It is one of the world's deadliest viral diseases and was discovered in 1976 when two consecutive outbreaks of fatal Ebola occurred in different parts of Central Africa. The first outbreak occurred in the Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly Zaire, in a village near the Ebola River, which gave its virus its name. The second outbreak occurred in what is now South Sudan, approximately 500 miles away. Ebola virus is a disease that is severe and often fatal, with a death rate up to 90%. African fruit bats are likely involved in the spread of Ebola virus and may even be the source animal. Scientists continue to search for conclusive evidence of the bat's role in transmission of Ebola. The 2014 outbreak of Ebola virus in West Africa was the largest, most severe, and most complex Ebola epidemic in history, according to the World Health Organization. More than 28,000 people were infected and over 11,000 People died before the international public health emergency ended in June 2016. Most of the cases occurred in three countries, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Without an effective early warning system, the virus spread rapidly within the region, revealing the failures of disjointed and under-resourced healthcare systems. An Ebola outbreak in 2014 was a global wake-up call regarding the ongoing threat of emerging infectious diseases. After slow initial response by the global community, including the U.S. government, the U.S. mounted what has become the largest effort by a single donor government to respond to Ebola. This includes an emergency appropriation of $5.4 billion by Congress as part of its final fiscal year 2015 spending package, a funding amount significantly larger than previous emergency response efforts to address emerging infectious diseases outbreaks such as SARS and avian influenza. It is believed that U.S. involvement kept the disease from spreading to the United States. HIV and AIDS. HIV crossed from chimps to humans in the 1920s in what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. This was probably a result of chimps carrying the simian immunodeficiency virus a virus closely related to HIV being hunted and eaten by people living in the animal. The most commonly accepted theory of HIV being transmitted to humans is that of the hunter. In this scenario, SIV was transferred to humans 
as a result of chimps being killed and eaten or their blood getting into cuts or wounds on people in the course of hunting. Normally, the hunter's body would have fought off SIV, but on a few occasions, the virus adapted itself within the new human host and became HIV. In the 1960s, the B subtype of HIV had made its way to Haiti. By this time, many Haitian professionals were working in the colonial Democratic Republic of Congo during the 1960s and they had returned to Haiti. Initially, they were blamed for being responsible for the HIV epidemic and suffered severe racism, stigma, and discrimination as a result. In 1981, a few cases of rare diseases were being reported among gay men in New York and California, such as Hosey's sarcoma and rare cancer and a lung infection called PCP-15. No one knew why these cancers and opportunistic infections were spreading, but they concluded that there must have been infectious disease causing them. At first, the disease was called all sorts of names relating to the word gay. It wasn't until mid-1982 that scientists realized the disease was also spreading among other populations, such as hemophiliacs and heroin users. By September that year, the disease was finally named AIDS. In 1983, the Centers for Disease Control in the United States listed the main at-risk groups, including partners of people with AIDS, people who injected drugs, hemophiliacs, and people who have recently been to Haiti. The Before long, people began to talk colloquially of a 4-H club at risk of AIDS, homosexuals, hemophiliacs, heroin addicts, and patients contributing to further stigmatization. The primary causes of death from HIV AIDS are opportunistic infections of cancer, both of which frequently are the result of progressive failure of the immune system. While antiviral medications have helped control HIV in the United States, there is still a serious problem in Africa. 40 years into the HIV epidemic, AIDS remains a leading cause of death of women of reproductive age in Africa. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the region most affected by HIV, 7 out of 10 young women did not have comprehensive knowledge about HIV. In contrast, countries that do invest in scaling up effective HIV prevention programs and education in general show impressive results. COVID-19, or coronavirus, is a disease caused by the new coronavirus, sars cov World Health Organization first learned of this new virus on December 31, 2019, following a report of a cluster of cases of viral pneumonia in Wuhan, People's Republic of China. The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, dry cough, fatigue. Other symptoms that are less common and may affect some patients include loss of taste or smell, nasal congestion, conjunctivitis, sore throat, headache, muscle or joint pain, different types of skin rashes, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, chills, or dizziness. Symptoms of severe COVID-19 disease include shortness of breath, loss of appetite, confusion, persistent pain or pressure in the chest and high temperature. According to the World Health Organization, among those who developed symptoms, about 80% recovered from the disease without needing hospital treatment. About 15% become seriously ill and require oxygen. About 5% become critically ill and need intensive care. Complications leading to death may include respiratory failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, sepsis, and septic shock, thrombolism, and or multi-organ failure, including injury of the heart, liver, or kidneys. According to WorldMeters.info, there have been 130,802,165 cases of COVID-19 in the world. There have been 2,850,152 deaths in the world. And 105,295,247 people have recovered. After a year under various levels of quarantine, Vaccinations are now in the head. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Be sure to leave a comment. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. And also, 
like and subscribe. Until next time.